Hey everybody, so we are going to talk about um, task 1.5. We're going to do a quick little video on the notes here about writing explicit equations for arithmetic sequences. Hopefully in the task part of this, you kind of figured out a pattern. And then we're going to write down exactly what it is um, we're going to be doing. So um, I'm going to write this in function notation. So when you're writing explicit equations, you're going to start with f of x equals. And then you're always going to start with your starting output. I'll put that in blue so we can always use blue for that, part, um, that number. So the starting output. And then next, it's going to be the pattern. You're going to start with your starting output, and you're either going to add or subtract if it's arithmetic. So I'm going to say plus or minus the common difference, because that's our phrase for the, uh, the pattern. And then you're always going to have a parentheses next, and your x, the variable x, that's the, um, the only letter that is going to be on that side of your equation. So you can replace it in the future for other numbers. Um, but it's not always just x. You're going to do x minus and whatever your starting input was. So I'll put that in green. So we can always code our information, our necessary information based on those colors here. So you could see I have three different colors. I've got the starting output in blue, the common difference in pink, and then the starting input in green. So those are the numbers that we're going to be looking for if we ever want to write an equation. Everything that I wrote in black, it's just going to be the same every single time. So let's go ahead and do our consensus. Uh, let's look at this table, number seven. <clears throat> so we have my first line of the table. That's what I'm going to look at first. And the input is a zero. My starting input is the first line of my table. That's when we use my starting input, which means that four is going to be my starting output. The number that's not in the table right away that I have to figure out is my common difference. So I'm going to look and see, well, what's happening between 4 and 11, between 11 and 18, and 18 and 25. Each time I'm adding 7. So that is my common difference. And so I can go ahead and write these here. My starting input was 0. My starting output was 4. And my common difference was a positive 7. And my equation. I'm going to write the same thing that I did in that box above. I'm going to write f of x equals, I'm going to be a nice big space, and I'm going to write my parentheses x minus. And I'm going to fill in the numbers where those words were. So I started with my starting output, which I have in blue, and that number this time is a 4. And then it's plus or minus my common difference. So here I have a plus 7, so I'm going to write plus 7. If my common difference was a negative, a subtraction, I would write minus. Plus, 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 plus. And then x minus whatever my starting input was. And in this case, it was a zero. So there I have my explicit equation, just by plugging in those numbers exactly where they are supposed to go. I'm going to try this next one. My, this time, my starting input is a 1 because it's the first x value. My starting output is a 30. And I could see my pattern is decreasing this time. So my constant difference is going to be negative. This time it's a negative 6. 30 minus 6 is 24, et cetera. So I know my common difference is a negative 6. My starting output is a 30. And my starting input was a 1. Again, I'm going to write my format here. I, I'm going to change that to g of x. Doing that because I just noticed right here it says g of x instead of f of x. Um, just like over here, it should have been f of n instead of f of x. So little things are important. So I'm going to replace those with n because that's the variable that they gave us. And here I'm going to use g of x instead of f of x. So this means the output. And so the next part is going to be my. Nice. Starting output, which was 30, 
plus or minus my common difference, in this case, a minus 6. And then I have my x minus my starting input, which is a 1. And there we have it. That's our explicit equation. Okay, let's try another one on the next page. I have a story to go along with this. The number of students who need to pay fees for the bookstore before the school start of school is 150. The number of students who have fees decreases by 15 each week of school. All right, so they went ahead and put it in the table for us. We can easily see that our starting input is zero and our starting output is 150. And then we have this right here, decreased by 15 each week. That is the same thing as subtracting 15 each row, which is our common difference. <clears throat> and so when I'm going to write my um, function, this time s of w, they told me which variables to use, s of w equals blank, 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 parentheses, and then instead of x minus a number, it's going to be w minus a number. And now I start with my numbers. I have 150, my starting input, minus 15 for my common difference, and then minus 0 for my starting input. Starting output, common difference, starting input. And here's my equation. Now, some of you might be realizing, well, we could simplify this a little bit further. W minus 0, you can, mm, that's fine. Right then. Um, so S of W equals 150 minus 15. W minus 0 is just W, so you could simplify that as just minus 15W if you choose. When it's a minus 0. If it's minus anything else, it's a much more complicated <laughs> simplification problem. But if it's a minus 0, you can get rid of those parentheses and get rid of the minus 0 because it doesn't do anything. And now we're going to use this function to evaluate s of 3. So I'm going to take, I'll do my shortened version, because why not, 150 minus 15 times, and let's see, if 3 is my input, I'm going to put a 3 right here to show that. And then I would um, say s of 3 equals 150 minus 45, which is 105. Now that should not be a surprise because right over here, right over, right over here, when input was a 3 in the table, the output was 105, and that's the same thing I have over here. And that's what should be the case. But now when I want to find S of 8, I don't want to make my table all the way down to 8. Instead, I can plug that 8 into my formula. So I say 150 minus 15 times 8. And I just, I could type, type this into my calculator. I could do it in my head. But I realized on the 8th week, 115 times 8 is 120. So now 150 minus 120 is only going to give us 30 students left who haven't paid their fees. So that's a lot faster to go directly to the eighth week instead of going through week four, five, six, seven, and then eight to find that number. But if we did that, it would have gotten given us the same answer. All right, here, last one. Cornelius is saving money to buy a house. After the first month, he has saved $5,600. Each month, he saves 120 more. In this case, they didn't give us a table at all. We have to fill that in. So I know it's changing by the month. The label that table, always important. And we're talking about the money that he has saved. I'm going to make that very clear. So after each month, how much money he has saved. So after the first month, that's the first month there, he saved $5,600. And then each month he saves 1,200 more. So we're going to count by the month, two, three, four. And every time I'm going to add 1,200. So 56 plus 1,200 gives me 6,800 plus another 1,200 
this gives me 8,000. And then plus another 500 gives me 9,200. Okay, so that right there, that plus 2,200, that's my common difference. I have my starting input as one and my starting output as 5,600. So really, I these are the same numbers as I have up here, the first month. But he, oops, and then, and then 5,600 was his amount and what he was doing each month. Oh, why are they changing colors? So those three numbers were in that sentence and I didn't actually need to fill out the table in order to write my equation. And then I did it anyway. So right here, M of X equals, we'll start with my starting output, 5,600, that value that we had, we had at the beginning. And then what's he doing every month? He's adding to it. So he can take um, 5,600 plus the 1,200. That's what's happening every month. And he does that repeatedly. So that's why we're going to multiply that times X. <clears throat> but we have to start with the starting input. So X minus 1. And there we have it. There's our equation. We could continue in the table to find these answers, or we could plug those numbers in. M of 6 equals 5,600 plus 1,200 times 6 minus 1. And we get M of 6 equals, and I did not bring my calculator with me right now, so 1,200 times Six minus times five should be like six thousand. Six thousand plus fifty-six hundred would be eleven thousand six hundred dollars. I hope that's correct. If it's not, forgive me. So after six months, he now has eleven thousand six hundred dollars. Now, how much money do you have to have after twenty-four months? M of twenty-four. He's still going to start with that $5,600 that he started with, and he added $1,200 each month for not 24 months because he, the first month was the $500. So he really is only doing it for 23 months. So that's why you have 24 minus 1. So you would have to <clears throat> type that in a calculator. I'm not going to try and do that math in my head right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. I wanted to be correct. But you would just get that big old number. That's going to be a lot of money that he saved up. And good for him. And um, hope he buys that house soon. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.